From Stone Age tools littered across the ocean floor to a legendary city of myths uncovered after a storm, here are 10 of the most amazing archaeological discoveries found underwater. Stone Tools on the Seafloor There is so much potential underwater for great archaeological discoveries from the North Pole to the South Pole. One of the coolest recent archaeological discoveries that took place underwater was when researchers discovered a collection of stone tools on the seafloor that date back 7,000 years. This happened along Australia's continental shelf, and it was the first discovery of its kind. According to Smithsonian Magazine, after the last ice age, the glaciers melted and seawater inundated a third of the habitable land in Australia. Much of this underwater land is hiding archaeological secrets. The research team found 269 stone artifacts under roughly 8 feet of water. These were discovered at the Cape Bruyeres Channel, and it appears that the tools were used for simple activities like cutting, hammering, and scraping. Researchers even found a grindstone that was likely used for baking bread. The tools would have belonged to the indigenous people on the continent of Australia, and it's interesting to discover that these ancient peoples had lived in parts of the country now completely submerged underwater. According to a marine geoarchaeologist from the United Kingdom's National Oceanography Centre, scientists are very interested in studying along the northern coast of Australia because the evidence there could tell scientists about how people first crossed from Southeast Asia to Australia without using boats. There was definitely a sort of land crossing, and that much we already know. But physical evidence could detail much more about the lives of the ancient indigenous Australians. Submerged Neolithic Settlement a new submerged Neolithic settlement has been discovered in Israel, and it is truly fascinating. Among the ruins of this lost coastal settlement, researchers discovered houses, graves, skeletons, and even a well. The site is called Atlet Yam, and researchers believe it dates back from somewhere between 6900 and 6300 BC. It's also submerged beneath at least 30 feet of water. This is not a new discovery. The site was found originally in 1984 by a marine archaeologist, but because of a lack in technology, it's been difficult to study until just recently. The most recent underwater excavations have found all kinds of great things, including seven megaliths at the center of the town arranged in a stone semicircle, kind of like Stonehenge, but much smaller. These stones were arranged around a freshwater spring, which researchers say was probably the site of ancient water rituals. As for how the town got submerged in the first place, scientists say the village was abandoned abruptly when a tsunami hit the region, which was probably caused by some kind of volcanic eruption in the area of the Mediterranean. A particularly cool discovery at this site was a pair of skeletons. A woman and a child were both found, and after extensive testing, they were revealed to be the earliest known cases of tuberculosis in humans. What exactly this means for history is still a bit murky, but it's definitely one of the most fascinating underwater finds coming out of Israel. The Seven Pagodas of Mahabalipuram Mahabalipuram is a UNESCO World Heritage Site off the coast of India. It's famous all over the world for its impressive cave temples, its ancient art, and fascinating architecture. Many of the structures here are from the 8th century AD, and the entire region is steeped in rich history. But one of the local legends says that thousands of years ago, this area contained much larger temple structures. Apparently, the largest of all the temples featured seven massive pagodas, but all of them were lost many years ago. Even some of the earliest European visitors recorded that the locals claimed that in the recent past, the copper tops of the pagodas could still be seen shining out at sea. But until recently, the story of the seven pagodas was nothing but a myth. In 2004, myth turned into reality. After a massive tsunami devastated much of the area and water was pulled out over 1,500 feet from the shore, locals reported seeing several rows of straight stones before the water rushed back inwards. But more than that, the tsunami broke apart the shoreline and uncovered a wealth of small statues statues and small temples that had been previously unseen. A new archaeological survey has been conducted by the Indian Navy to see if the site truly exists, and yes, it turns out the seven pagodas are indeed real. The survey revealed a series of buildings, platforms, and walls that could be interpreted as a larger complex. Plus, based on the style of the carvings and some coins found underwater at the site, professional archaeologists now believe that the seven pagodas did exist but have since been destroyed. Why? Probably because of another tsunami that attacked the region in the 13th century, wiping out much of the temple complex. Cleopatra's Underwater Palace Speaking of temple complexes, nothing is quite as cool as Queen Cleopatra's palace being found off the coast of Alexandria in the north of Egypt. The city was originally founded way back in 332 BC by Alexander the Great during his conquest of Egypt. 
and since then the city has had a pretty vibrant history. 300 years after Alexander's death, Queen Cleopatra took her place on the throne. She had a spectacular palace, at least so far as legend is concerned, but it magically disappeared. For the next few thousand years, nothing was known about Cleopatra's palace until the 1990s when a French archaeologist realized that it was hidden under the water in a bay near the shoreline of the city. We now know that Cleopatra's palace is real and just as amazing as history describes. Just off the coast of Alexandria, divers have found columns and pillars, ancient paintings, the foundation of Cleopatra's palace itself, and several statues that were likely part of Cleopatra's shrine and temple. There were even two perfectly preserved sphinxes found beneath the water. This site is not going to be restored to its former glory anytime soon, but it's still pretty cool to think there is even more to ancient Egypt hidden under the water where we can't readily see it. Another cool fact is that the team that found the foundation of Cleopatra's palace did carbon testing and found that it dated back to 200 years before her birth, meaning that she likely inherited the now sunken palace from somebody else. Vasa Shipwreck the Vasa shipwreck is one of the most phenomenal pieces of nautical heritage ever salvaged. It even has its own museum. It took about six years for the shipwreck to be found in the Baltic Sea, where she had been sleeping for 333 years. But by autumn of 1956, the shipwreck Vasa was discovered. Then, in 1961, a serious effort was undertaken to salvage the vessel from the bottom of the ocean. It was one of the first major shipwrecks to be completely retrieved from the bottom of the sea, and it was no easy feat. But what is the Vasa, and why was it so important to be preserved? Well, the Vasa started her life as a wooden warship way back in 1628. She was built during the Thirty Years' War to support King Gustav II Adolf's military campaign. The ship at the time was the largest ever in any Swedish fleet, and she was even equipped with an extra cannon deck. But the story of her sinking is pretty unfortunate. The ship departed, began to slowly sail for the open sea, got struck by a sudden wind, and sank before it even reached the ocean. Most of the crew and the passengers escaped and this ship was very much forgotten by the end of the 18th century. Basically, the Vasa is Sweden's version of the Titanic just a few hundred years earlier. Doggerland Doggerland is a vast stretch of water between the eastern ocean of Britain and the mainland of Europe. Looking at it now, all you can see is water. You would never guess that 10,000 years ago it was home to a massive civilization of humans. But according to live science, there have been recent discoveries of a fossilized forest underneath Doggerland that researchers believe is physical proof that we are close to discovering the remains of a human settlement lost beneath the ocean for 10,000 years. In fact, a researcher from the Bradford University is absolutely sure that we're close to finding an ancient settlement. The most recent voyage taken to the North Sea lasted 11 days and during that time, scientists took as many samples as they could from an area dubbed Brown Bank. Their hope is that by taking tons of DNA samples from everything they managed to dredge up during the expedition, they can get a realistic look at the types of plants and animals that would have been living there in the ancient past. This will give them a clue as to the precise location of the ancient human settlement. While no Stone Age relics have been found yet, scientists are extremely hopeful. Ancient Incan Offerings Archaeologists have made an outstanding discovery at Lake Titicaca in Bolivia. This lake, which shares a border with Bolivia and Peru, was a sacred site for the Inca civilization. It's believed that the Inca people practiced all kinds of different rituals at the lake, and just recently in 2020, archaeologists pulled a strange offering out of the water that had been down there for at least 500 years. Inside the offering, researchers found a small gold bracelet and an alpaca figurine carved out of a shell. Several different universities participated in the research at the lake, and they believe that based on the offering discovered, it had something to do with human sacrifice. What makes this so interesting is that the ancient Inca actually believed that their people originated from the lake. There was even a massive ritual complex constructed on an island inside the lake. Archaeologists believe that beneath the water is a hidden treasure hoard of artifacts. While this single offering is only a slight clue as to the specifics of the rituals performed hundreds of years ago, it is a very unique find, and with more research it may explain why the Inca needed to throw offerings, which sometimes included their own friends and family, into the lake at all. Underwater Treasure Let's take a look at some sunken treasure. For centuries, people have suspected that the coastal waters of Albania, which have gone mostly unexplored in modern times, are a virgin hotspot for treasure and sunken ships. The coastline spans over 270 miles, touched by both the Adriatic Sea and the Ionian Sea. But because of the communist regime that ruled the Balkan state until 1990 was so brutal, anyone caught diving was to be shot on sight, no questions asked. It's no wonder that the plunder off the coast of Albania has remained untouched and unspoiled. 
that is until recently. The waters are now open and looters are eager to steal all they can. Archaeologists are now in the area as well, trying to scoop up everything in sight before the looters get to it. But the issue here is that much of the wealth is only about 90 feet deep. This does not require any special equipment and any hobo with a net can steal themselves some treasure. To give you an idea of the kind of underwater treasure we're talking about, expeditions starting in 2006 have found at least 40 shipwrecks along the coast, ranging from the 7th century BC to ships from both World War I and World War II. Many of these ships are from Roman times as well, and yes, there is definitely some treasure to be found. The biggest question is who will find it first, the treasure hunters or the archaeologists? Ancient Minoan Shipwreck the Minoans were an ancient civilization that existed between 3650 and 1400 BC. They flourished on the Greek island of Crete during the Bronze Age and were some of the most prolific traders in the region, along with Greece herself and ancient Egypt. Now, a 4,000-year-old shipwreck has been discovered in the Mediterranean Sea near Turkey that belonged to the Minoans. According to the studies that have been going on since 2007 on this ancient shipwreck, it's the oldest ever to be found in Turkey, and that's saying something considering Turkey is one of the oldest inhabited regions on Earth. The shipwreck was likely used for trading since the entire area of Mediterranean thousands of years ago was basically just ships going back and forth with trade and war. But the researchers didn't just find a boat, they also discovered a lot of other cool stuff underwater in the region. They found over 20 submerged harbors that had been lost throughout time, probably because of rising sea levels. They also found over 400 anchors littering the seafloor that date from between the Bronze Age and the time of the Ottoman Empire. This project was carried out by 15 researchers, and they were supported by the Scientific and Technological Research Council of Turkey. The team included marine geophysicists, biologists, and underwater archaeologists, and even after several years of research, they have only scratched the surface of the amazing world living underwater at the bottom of the Mediterranean Sea. The Zakynthus Ruins the Zakynthus ruins are a bit of a disappointment. What researchers first believed was an underwater city lost to time near the Greek island of Zakynthus has turned out to be a geological phenomenon. According to the report from Live Science, underwater divers investigated the disc-shaped structures hoping to find clues of an ancient and previously unknown ruin. However, everyone was disappointed when it turned out that the geological formations are actually a natural phenomenon that occurred 5 million years ago. Archaeologists from a special department inside the Greek Ministry of Culture found absolutely absolutely zero evidence of an ancient civilization. They did this using special x-ray techniques and chemical analyses. The results showed that what everyone thought were ruins were really just fossilized remains of seeps on the seafloor that had once been kind of like exhaust pipes for the earth, spitting out methane and hydrocarbons into the water. Because of the microbes in the sediment, which would have liked using the carbon and the methane as fuel over countless years, a kind of natural cement barrier was created around the structure. This type of formation is known as a concretion. To summarize, there was no lost city, it was basically just a concrete structure where farts came out of the earth. Which of these underwater discoveries is the most impressive? From the most terrifying vampire fish to a legendary river that can boil you alive, here are 10 of the scariest things found in the Amazon. Payara Vampire Fish the Payara vampire fish is one of the most horrendous things ever found in the Amazon. This fish is absolutely terrifying. There are two species of Payara, with the largest being the silver Payara that weighs upwards of 35 pounds. While these fish aren't that large compared to a bull shark or something of that nature, they are that scary. They're called vampire fish for a reason, just look at the massive fangs on them. They have a head about as big as a human's and their teeth are long enough to do some deadly damage if you were ever silly enough to put your hand in the mouth of a payara. These huge fish can be found throughout the Amazon but are mostly located in the Rio Orinoco in Colombia. This is also the river that is home to the notorious pink dolphins. The trademark teeth of these vicious fish are used to impale their prey, which typically consists of smaller fish. You might also hear the payara being called the saber-toothed barracuda, the vampire tetra, or the saber-tusk barracuda. Smaller payara are super common in large aquariums and are known to be ridiculously aggressive. The Boiling River Deep in the Peruvian part of the Amazon jungle is a mysterious boiling river that kills everything that enters it. At least that's what the legends say. This place has been talked about in Peruvian folklore for centuries. 
There were even reports of Spanish conquistadors who ventured into the forest looking for gold, only to return with stories of poisonous water, man-eating snakes, and a river so hot that it could boil men alive. And yes, this place is real. A Peruvian geoscientist went searching for it in 2011, hiking deep into the Amazon rainforest. Much to his surprise, he found a boiling river. The average temperature reached a scorching 186 degrees Fahrenheit. It's not quite hot enough to boil a man alive, but it's definitely a great template for a scary legend. While geothermal hot springs are super common all over the world, with most of them reaching similar temperatures, this is the only place on Earth with an entire river burning hot. It's apparently 82 feet in length and roughly 4 miles long. It's also 434 miles from the closest volcanic system. Suffice to say, this Amazonian legend doesn't make any sense. But after five years of painstaking research, it turns out that the river is heated by underground geothermal manifestations. Basically, heat is brought to the river through fault lines and cracks, with the source of the heat a significant distance away. From much deeper in the earth is a great source of geothermal energy, and that energy seeps up through the ground until it reaches the river, where it then makes the water ridiculously hot. Tyrant King Leeches the Tyrant King Leech is arguably one of the most disgusting and horrifying things found in the Amazon jungle. It's a leech with teeth that is often found inside the noses of people after they go swimming in the waters of the Peruvian Amazon. The leech is about the size of your pinky finger and it's a serious bloodsucker. It has just one jaw, five teeth, and it's meaner than any other leech known to man. In fact, Wired claims that its five teeth are longer than the teeth on any other leech. It's known scientifically as Tyrannobadella rex, and it's not something you want to take with you after a short swim. The first specimen of the Tyrant King leech was found by a doctor in 1997 in Peru after a young boy who had been swimming complained about having a headache. Later, another specimen was taken out of a young boy in a different area of Peru, and a third from a nine-year-old girl. The thing they all had in common was that they had been bathing inside of streams in the Amazon. We now know that the Tyrant King leech hangs out in the water waiting to go up people's noses. It invades the orifice of your nose and then feeds on your mucous membranes. Some different kinds of leeches that do this live in the Middle East, in Africa, and in Asia, and we hate all of them. This is just another terrifying reason not to go wandering in the Amazon. The Walking Palm Tree most of us know by now that plants are far more complicated than they appear. If you've ever taken a look at the Venus flytrap, which has the uncanny ability to eat live insects, you know that plants can evolve to be spectacular. And this brings me to my point. One of the scariest things in the Amazon is the walking palm tree. The story of this tree has been told for ages, with many people claiming the walking palm tree can literally move its unusual roots to walk. Of course, nobody is claiming it can stroll to the store and back, but they do say that it can move a little way when it needs to. The difference between the walking palm tree and other similar plants is that the tree has a lot of small roots that make it look like it has a bunch of little legs. However, these trees are not like the mighty Ents from the Lord of the Rings, they won't be smashing any castles, at least not for another few million years of evolution. While many people anecdotally say that the tree can walk slowly from shade to sunlight, it's actually not true. According to live science, these trees are greatly dramatized. The walking palm can't actually walk, its roots don't move in search of sunlight, and unless you're beating on it with an axe or blowing at it with wind, it's not going to move anywhere. It certainly can't pick its roots up and go for a wander. The reason so many people who operate in the jungle believe this tree walking myth is because sometimes the roots of the walking palm really do look like they're moving. Sometimes the roots on one side of the tree will die, giving it the appearance that it's moved in one direction or another. Poison Dart Frogs One of the scariest and most dangerous creatures in the Amazon is something that looks entirely innocent. I'm talking about the deadly poison dart frog. Some people consider these to be the most poisonous animal in the world. Specifically, the golden poison frog, which is native to the country of Colombia, is one of the most frightening things on Earth. Just imagine a tiny frog that can easily fit on your finger and has enough poison in its skin glands to kill 10 human beings. And that's if the poison enters your bloodstream. It doesn't even need to bite you. You touch the skin, the poison ends up in your mouth or in a wound, and you're dead in 10 minutes. It's far more frightening than any snake simply because it's pretty much a promised death. There is also no known antidote. But here's where things with the poison dart frogs get weird. They don't create the toxin themselves. When taken out of their natural habitat and bred in captivity, they are not poisonous at all. 
In fact, they are just like normal frogs and completely safe to handle. This has led researchers to believe that the poison dart frog synthesizes toxins through what they eat in the wild. They basically steal their toxicity from eating certain insects. To understand why the frogs don't die from the toxins themselves, researchers from the State University of New York did a little bit of investigating, and as it turns out, it's all about an amino acid mutation. Basically, the frogs have full immunity to one of the deadliest poisons ever because of a special amino acid in their bodies. It is truly fascinating. The poison builds up inside of them and is discharged through their skin glands rather than them being poisoned. Mosquitoes Perhaps the scariest thing in all of the Amazon jungle is the mosquito. Mosquitoes kill indiscriminately, they are literally everywhere in the jungle, and you can almost never stop yourself from being bit at least a little bit. In the Amazon rainforest, the major mosquito species carry all kinds of seriously nasty diseases. I'm talking about malaria, yellow fever, you name it. If you catch malaria in the rainforest because of a mosquito, you are going to need preventative medicine immediately. If you catch the dang fever from a mosquito, there is no preventative preventative medicine and you're in big trouble. Most people who have visited the Amazon would agree that there is nothing scarier than the mosquito. Snakes are definitely a danger, giant fish can freak you out, but mosquitoes kill for fun. Mosquitoes actually come with a super long mouth part that creates what is known as the blood-sucking proboscis. Adult mosquitoes usually rest in the daytime, so the best time to be out and about is during daylight hours. But once the sun goes down, they explode out of their hiding place and search for food. And guess what? If you're in the Amazon, you are the food. What a lot of people don't know is that tropical mosquitoes are actually in the same scientific order as the ordinary housefly. However, they are far more dangerous. It's believed that there are over 3,000 different species of mosquitoes, and they all live near water in the warmer regions of the world. And in case you did not know already, malaria is in fact the deadliest disease in all of human history. Bullet Ants Unlike mosquitoes, bullet ants won't kill you, but you will definitely wish you were dead when the searing pain from the bullet ant begins to take hold. The bullet ant has often been declared the most painful insect in the world. Out of every tiny creature that creeps or crawls, the bullet ant delivers the most painful sting. When one of them bites you, it's an experience that you will never forget for the rest of your life, and unlike some insect stings that hurt for a bit and then go away, when you're stricken by a bullet ant, the pain stays with you for between 12 and 24 hours. It's one of the longest miseries you will ever have to endure. The pain is so excruciating that some people have compared it to being shot with a very real bullet. According to a man that has been bitten by one of these horrifying creatures, the pain comes in giant waves and crescendos. It's like a tsunami of pain that crashes against you, recedes a tiny bit, then crashes against you again. And it goes on and on for what feels like an eternity. Some indigenous tribes in the Amazon actually use bullet ants in ceremonies where young boys become men. During the puberty rites, the boys will wear makeshift gloves filled with bullet ants, receiving multiple bites for a few minutes, and then they have to stand and endure the pain for the full 12 hours. In some societies, this is the only way to be accepted as a man. The only good news is that the pain does eventually fade, and there are no long-term effects. Corpse Flower I can't think of a scarier name for a plant than the corpse flower. It's one of the largest flowers in the world, as well as one of the rarest. It also exudes an extremely terrible odor. If you came across one of these things in the jungle, I guarantee you would be awestruck and at least a little worried. The reason it's called the corpse flower is because the odor it emits is similar to what you might smell from a decaying corpse. According to an outdoor floriculturist from the Chicago Botanical Garden, the smell of the corpse flower is used to attract pollinators. The corpse flower attracts carnivorous insects that usually feed on dead flesh, such as dung bees beetles, and flesh flies. The smell of the flower and its dark color are meant to imitate a dead animal. Then, when the fooled insects fly inside of the plant, they realize there is no food and they fly away. But they fly away with pollen on their legs, and the pollen eventually spreads across the forest floor so that more of these flowers can grow. After a single corpse flower has bloomed and fully pollinated, it collapses and dies. It's one of those plants that lives to multiply and then dies without doing much else. Brazilian Wandering Spider Everyone is scared of spiders. You probably don't know a whole lot of people who would willingly hang out with a giant spider, or even a small one for that matter. And so, it's only natural that one of the scariest things found in the Amazon happens to be the most poisonous spider in the world. This is the Brazilian wandering spider, also known as the banana spider. 
The Guinness Book of World Records has named it the most venomous spider in the world through multiple years. Not only does this thing look awful with its long legs and beady eyes, but it is extremely deadly. It usually only bites if it feels provoked, but that does not make anyone feel any safer. After a person is bitten by one of these horrifying spiders, the first symptoms are going to be extreme pain at the sight of the wound, sudden sweating, and uncontrollable goosebumps. After 30 minutes, your blood pressure goes crazy, your heartbeat goes nuts, and your lunch goes out of your mouth. You can get hypothermia and vertigo at the same time, then begin to convulse. It's an absolutely horrendous experience that most people don't recover from. But perhaps one of the most bizarre things about being bitten by the Brazilian wandering spider is that, according to live science, the venom boosts a certain chemical inside the body that increases blood flow, and in human males it can cause a very long and very painful erection. That's probably the last thing you want while rolling around on the forest floor suffering because of a spider bite. The Forest Floor Psychologically speaking, the scariest part of the Amazon jungle is the Amazon jungle itself. It's just like the old saying, there is nothing to fear but fear itself. And when you're deep in the rainforest, there is nothing to fear except the actual rainforest. In this case, I'm talking about the darkness of the forest floor. It has been estimated that only 1% of the sunlight actually reaches the floor of the forest because of how thick the upper canopy is. That creates a pretty horrifying environment no matter what time of day it is. If you're under the canopy, there is a pretty high chance that you're in total darkness. And guess what? That can cause even the bravest person to lose their mind, become paranoid, and have a mental breakdown. From a secret dungeon hidden beneath an abandoned barn to evidence of a horrifying demonic ritual at an abandoned government facility, here are 10 of the creepiest discoveries in abandoned places. Dungeon of Horrors Back in 2012, police found one of the most horrifying things ever in an abandoned farmhouse in the town of Pickering. This happened in Canada, and the thing the police found was a confinement room located beneath the floor of the farmhouse. It was basically a dungeon of horrors. What makes it even more terrifying is that police refused to discuss what types of crimes were committed inside the dungeon. According to a report from CTV News, the police claimed that they discovered what the room was intended for, but because of the potential effect on the victim or victims in involved, they could not discuss it. One thing is for certain, the dungeon was designed to hold someone captive. The farmhouse was located on a small property near the local airport and it had been marked for demolition when contractors discovered the secret dungeon. Since then, a 44-year-old man was charged with crimes involving the farmhouse and its dungeon, though we still don't know exactly what happened since the cops are being so quiet about it. One thing is for sure, nobody builds a secret dungeon with the intention of giving out free candy. The Exton Witch House In Exton, Pennsylvania, a house was built in the 1800s, but this is no ordinary house. It's known locally as the Exton Witch House, and it's been said that the family who once occupied it practiced witchcraft. It has been abandoned for quite some time, but it's still a seriously creepy location. There were once graves next to the house that contained the bodies of the family who had lived there, including the mother, father, and their two children, all of which allegedly died under suspicious circumstances in the late 1800s. But apparently, the graves have since been lost without a trace. It was not until a YouTuber visited the Exton Witch House and filmed his exploration of it that we discovered the horrifying truth inside. According to the YouTuber himself, he discovered a small hut that had been previously a well, and through this well was an underground tunnel that led to a secret basement inside the house. Apparently, while the YouTuber was exploring in the middle of the night, his camera continued to detect faces and refocus on its own, as if there were aberrations in there with him. To date, the house has been vandalized repeatedly and nobody has occupied it. Another creepy thing he found inside was a cluster of chairs pushed together and facing the wall. It's unknown if the house has been used for anything unsavory since it was abandoned, but it's safe to say that the supposed witches who lived there in the 1800s were doing some pretty disturbing things, and who knows, maybe their ghosts still haunt the place even today. Have you ever visited a haunted house? Did you encounter strange apparitions or other ghostly entities? Let me know what your experience was like. Post a comment below with your story and then be sure to subscribe. There are loads more amazing videos coming out very soon and you will not want to miss even one. Human Leg 
In 2018, a police investigation was launched after a human leg was found in an abandoned building in Harlem. According to a news report from NBC, the New York Police Department said that a leg bone and femur were found on the fourth floor of an abandoned building while the workers were there to remove asbestos. A medical examiner was quickly called to the scene and the investigation was launched. The police are saying that the building sat abandoned since sometime in 1980 and an eyewitness who worked in the area said that other than a small general store on the ground floor of the building somewhere around seven years ago, nobody has occupied any of its rooms. Of course, the questions surrounding the human leg are numerous. Whose leg is it? Why was there only a leg and no other body parts? And of course, what exactly was going on in the apartment that could have caused a person to leave without one of their legs? It's a true puzzle, and it's one of those weird mysteries that may never be solved. Mysterious Ghost Shark Picture this, you're inside an abandoned wildlife park located near Melbourne, Australia. You're rummaging through the remains of exhibits and broken equipment, and suddenly you come upon the silhouette of an enormous shark floating through a tank of murky green liquid. That's exactly what happened when a trespassing filmmaker went to explore the abandoned park that had shut down earlier in 2012. It looks like they shut down pretty abruptly, especially considering that they left this horrifying shark floating in a green-tinted tank near heaps of litter and decaying arcade machines. The great white shark inside the tank was roughly 12 feet long when the filmmaker found it, and the reason the water in its tank was green is because it was actually formaldehyde, a chemical that has great preservative properties. Formaldehyde is also super dangerous, and exposure to it can be harmful. Apparently, the abandoned park has been a popular hangout zone for years. The entire building allegedly stinks like possum feces. There is still milk in one of the refrigerators that has been expired for quite some time, and some of the rooms even appear to have been squatted in, perhaps by homeless people. But definitely the creepiest part of the entire place is the floating ghost shark. It is super unnerving, and definitely not the kind of thing you want to find while urban exploring. But oh well, at least the shark can't bite anybody. Common Scop Kalmanskop is the famous ghost town in Namibia. You've probably even heard of the location before. It was a thriving mining settlement in the early 1900s, but was hurriedly abandoned in 1954. For the past 70 years, the homes of this once prosperous settlement have been reclaimed by the desert sands. It's a pretty mesmerizing place to go in the daytime, just begging to be explored and photographed. But the real creepiness comes at night when the desert darkens and gets quiet. That's really when the ghosts come out. Although the ghost town has been scoured by by countless travelers over the years, there is still a lot of stuff left to find. The houses may be mostly filled with sand, but sometimes travelers find remnants of the people who lived there buried like hidden treasures. Some of the rooms are even relatively clean, and you can see the old tools of the trade sitting on benches never to be used again. Some more disturbing things to find are rusted bedposts, old bathtubs, and even a rusty kettle buried in the sand that may have served an old gold miner his last sip of tea. This is not a new creepy place, but it's definitely somewhere to go if you want to freak yourself out and find some old and weird artifacts. Satanic Rituals This next story is reminiscent of the terrifying Blair Witch Project movie. A man named Mike Kimmel, who spends most of his time searching for the invasive Burmese pythons in the Florida Everglades, stumbled upon something out of a nightmare. It was late in the evening and he was looking to wrangle some snakes near the abandoned Aerojet Dade rocket facility near the Everglades National Park when he found a large pile of rocks stacked up by human hands with red inverted crosses painted on them. His immediate reaction was that he had found the remains of some weird satanic ritual. Along with the upside down crosses painted on the rocks, Mike found baby dolls with crosses drawn on their foreheads with ash, something he thought was a bloody gown, and some pretty disturbing words that I cannot repeat here spray-painted on the wall. According to Mike the Snake Wrangler, he was in the exact same location a few weeks earlier, and none of the weird ritualistic stuff was there. And even though Mike is used to finding lots of strange and creepy things in the forest, he felt that what he found on this occasion was eerily authentic. He didn't think it was kids trying to scare people, but perhaps something more real and infinitely more dangerous. Unbelievable Creatures in London back in the 1960s, a construction crew was working to clear the way for a new residential neighborhood. To do this, they had to take down an old abandoned mansion that had belonged to a man named Thomas Theodore Marilyn. In the basement of his abandoned home, builders discovered thousands of small wooden boxes that contained all the horrors of the world. So far as the story goes, Thomas Marilyn was some kind of fringe zoologist. 
Throughout his life, he had collected creatures and artifacts that most people think are only a myth. Among the souvenirs were preserved fairy skeletons, what might have been demon skulls, and all kinds of other strange creature artifacts. Of course, all of this stuff is complete nonsense. Even though it does look extremely convincing, a reclusive rich guy in a mansion did not have werewolf remains in a jar in his basement. The truth is that this collection of oddities was developed by an artist, and all the reports of it being found by construction workers were just part of a big publicity stunt. It would definitely be cool to think that some real-life Van Helsing was out there hunting vampires and ghouls, but unfortunately, it's just not true. Human Remains the last story was all hype, and this next story is all horror. After a house in Danville set fire, nobody thought too much of it. The house was abandoned, and nobody really cared. But then, 11 months later, after the house caught on fire, somebody found something absolutely mortifying inside. Because the home was basically a burnt-out shell, it was extremely accessible from the front windows or the front door, meaning just about anybody could go inside and do whatever they wanted. And so it was that police were called to investigate the discovery of human remains. The police would not come forward to say who discovered the remains, but it was probably somebody who crept in thinking they were going to have a little bit of fun, only to stumble upon a human corpse. Unfortunately, this story crashed and burned pretty quickly back in 2019, and the members of the public don't have any additional facts. Whether the dead person was part of the fire that burned the place down, or if they perished within the abandoned structure later, it is really anyone's guess. Brain in a Jar Let's keep it rolling with the horror. Inside of an abandoned hospital in Glasgow, Scotland, teenagers found a brain in a jar. A video emerged back in 2016 of a group of teenagers who discovered a brain floating in a vat of liquid while they were scoping out a creepy abandoned hospital building. The brain with the jar in it was labeled and dated from the 1970s. That means it had been sitting in that building for around 40 years. Of course, these six teens were arrested by police after the video surfaced online, and a criminal investigation has been launched, but it's seriously doubtful that it was the teenagers who put the brain in the jar. What makes this story even creepier is that according to local news sources, the discovery of the brain happened just days after a different group of children discovered a fetus inside of a bag in the same hospital building. After hearing both these stories, I seriously hope nobody goes inside that hospital looking for something disgusting. They'll probably find it. Animal Bones on Strings An urban explorer searching through an abandoned building on the farmland that used to belong to a man named Tony Martin, who became very famous in 1999 after shooting and killing a burglar, has found some pretty weird stuff. The owner of the farm was jailed over two decades ago after shooting the home invader, and since then his farmhouse in Norfolk, England, has been mostly abandoned. The guy was sentenced to life, but then had his sentence reduced to manslaughter because the public rallied behind him, saying that he was only defending his home. Whatever your views on deadly force against home truders are, the truth about this man and his house adds new layers of complexity on top of the story. Of course, in any case, this urban explorer searching the abandoned buildings on the guy's property found a pretty disturbing sight. He claims that he found a room filled with bones of animals. And not only that, but many of the animal bones were strung together in weird and very creepy ways, then hung from the ceiling with rope. The explorer got all of this on video and posted it online, and you can see for yourself just how disturbing the scene is. Witchcraft, Satanism, or just some lunatic squatting on the property and playing with animal bones. Nobody knows who did it. From time travelers to the most recent evidence of Planet X, plus some mysterious disappearances, here are 10 mysterious events that will make you question reality. Time Traveling Stock Genius in March of 2003, the FBI arrested a man named Andrew Carlson. He was 44 years old at the time and had one of the luckiest runs on the stock market in the entire history of the stock market. In only two weeks, Andrew turned an initial $800 investment into an incredible $350 million. This obviously caught the eye of the proper authorities and the FBI quickly investigated Andrew. They wanted to charge him with insider trading, and Andrew made a full confession. But he told the FBI that not only was he an inside trader, all of his 126 high-risk trades paid off because he traveled from 250 years in the future and knew that they would make him rich. 
Obviously, the FBI laughed this off as a ridiculous excuse. The FBI was sure that he was doing inside trading since every single trade he made paid off big, and that kind of thing is just not possible even if you are the luckiest man on earth. The FBI asked Andrew for his sources, but he would never give them up. Apparently, Andrew did offer to tell the authorities the whereabouts of Osama bin Laden and give them the cure for AIDS as part of his plea bargain. It's unknown to this day whether he gave them the information or not. In any case, the FBI could find no records of Andrew's existence prior to three months before they arrested him. Then, an unidentified person posted his bail for $1 million and Andrew quickly vanished and was never seen or heard from again. Either he really was from the future or Andrew was the luckiest guy ever. Do you invest in the stock market? How have your investments gone? Are you going to be the next Andrew Carlson? Let me know what you think in the comments below, but don't reveal any inside information. Do remember to subscribe if you haven't already though. If you like this video, you'll love what's up next right here on Taltanic. The Ice Woman The story of the Ice Woman is really going to make you question what is possible in this reality. The event went down in the small town of Langby on the night of December 20th, 1980. Jean Hilliard was a 19-year-old girl, and after meeting some friends in town, she was on her way home at about midnight when she got in an accident. She was driving down the street when her car hit a ditch and broke down. It was below 20 degrees outside and all she was wearing was cowboy boots. She got out of her car and thought she could walk to her friend's house through the cold, and she almost got there too. She finally saw her friend's house through the trees and just when she did, everything went black. Supposedly, Jean made it to her friend's yard, then crawled on her hands and knees to his doorstep. And that was where she lay for six full hours with her eyes frozen open. But of course, Jean never remembered any of it. Jean was frozen so solid that doctors at the hospital couldn't even get an IV into her arm when she was finally admitted. And besides, they already thought she was dead. But then in the morning, Jean woke up. She had thawed out and by noon was totally okay. According to a professor from the University of Minnesota, this kind of thing can happen with extreme hypothermia. Basically, Jean went into a kind of frozen hibernation, then gradually thawed out and was otherwise undamaged. But nonetheless, it's an absolute miracle that she lived. Doctors had even been considering amputating both her legs to avoid a frostbite infection, but she ended up being totally fine. Legend of the Ghost Ship the mystery of the ghost ship has never been solved. It's an absolutely bizarre event that occurred in 1921, when the schooner named Carol A. Deering was spotted by a lighthouse keeper on January 29th bound for its home port, he could never have expected that the unthinkable would happen. According to Captain Jacobson, the keeper of the lighthouse, he initially saw the crewmen of the Carol A. Deering wandering around suspiciously on the foredeck of the ship, but the ship never pulled into port. Then on January 31st, the Coast Guard came up on the ship run aground with its sails set and the lifeboats missing. The boat was abandoned. Nobody knows what happened to the crew, but they vanished like ghosts. They took their personal belongings with them, some navigational equipment, and they even took the ship's anchor. Even after a long and exhausting investigation by the FBI, the ship's logs were never found and there was no trace of the crew ever discovered. To this date, the ship remains an unsolved mystery. Nobody knows what happened to the crew, why they were wandering around on the deck on January 29th, why they never pulled into the port, or where they could have gone. There are some theories, some say that there was a mutiny, some say pirates attacked them, and others say that they were besieged by gangsters who were running rum illegally. But the truth is that this mystery will never be solved. The Babushka Lady The assassination of JFK was one of the most pivotal moments in US history. It's also the source of a lot of conspiracy theories. One of the most mysterious aspects of this fateful day must be the Babushka Lady. On November 22, 1963, there were many people on the streets of Dallas to watch the president's motorcade pass by. There were also a lot of photographs taken of the scene that day. Over the years, most of the people seen in the photographs have been identified, but not the Babushka Lady. She is a mysterious woman seen in many different photos standing in the grass wearing what appears to be a traditional Russian headscarf. She also appears to be taking a photograph of the exact moment JFK was shot. Even to this day, nobody has any clue who this woman was. The big questions here are why was she alone? Why was she positioned in such a way that she could easily snapshot the exact moment of the president's death? Why didn't she run while all the other people around her were running for cover or freaking out? She seems completely calm even after the shot goes off. Was she a spy, a secret service agent, a man dressed as a woman, or an assassin from the future? Nobody knows for sure. Malaysia Flight 370 Perhaps the most recent mysterious event of the last few years was when Malaysia Airlines Flight 370 disappeared on March 8, 2014 after departing Kuala Lumpur. 
The plane had been heading for Beijing with 227 passengers and 12 crew when it vanished off the face of the Earth. It was there one second, and the next it had vanished off the radar and was simply gone. To this day, the aircraft has not been found and neither have the bodies. Most people agree that something fishy is going on with this flight. In all likelihood, it crashed into the Indian Ocean and was then covered up by the Malaysian government. Of course, this is all just speculation. Other people claim that there was a hijacking, that the aircraft controls were taken over by electric virus technology as part of a larger scheme, that there was a terrorist attack, that investors were assassinated using the flight because of a certain patent that was worth a fortune, or even that the United States captured the plane and then flew it into a special military base. Despite all these wild theories, some of which can be pretty convincing, nobody really knows what happened to this flight. How many governments are involved in a potential cover-up, how far the conspiracy goes, or if it was just truly a mysterious accident. Planet X As far as conspiracy theories go, Planet X is at the top of the weird scale. Some say that Planet X is hiding on the other side of our sun, some people say it's very close to Earth but completely invisible, and some people claim that Planet X is populated by aliens who have been watching us secretly for centuries. In any case, according to The Verge, there is new evidence that suggests Planet X could actually be real. Prepare to have your concept of reality shattered. Scientists have found a small object orbiting far from the sun that fits in with the theory of Planet X. Astronomers are even saying that the small object may be on the path it's taking now because of the hidden planet's gravity. This unknown object is nicknamed the Goblin, and it was spotted by astronomers in Hawaii back in 2015. For the next four years, researchers followed its trip around the sun. Observations showed that the small object takes an outstanding 40,000 years to complete a single orbit around the sun. This could be because its gravity is influenced by a hidden planet totally undetected by us at the edge of our solar system. There are actually 14 space rocks sharing in this orbit, with their paths unnecessarily elongated around the sun. It could be that they are in fact circling the mysterious planet X. Time Traveling Hipster one look at this photo from the 1940s and it's immediately obvious that there is something horribly wrong. The original photograph was taken at the 1941 reopening of the South Fork Bridge in Canada. When the museum digitized and then uploaded all of its collection of photos online back in 2010, somebody noticed this photograph of a guy dressed a little too casually for the 1940s. It does indeed appear that a time traveler was actually caught in a photograph. He has a modern t-shirt with a logo on it, wraparound sunglasses, and a small portable camera. One glance and you can instantly tell this guy is from the future. But wait, this guy has actually been debunked. The photo itself is not fake, but it would be a little weird if someone traveled backwards in time just to take some photos of a bridge reopening in Canada. Let's break it down a little. The t-shirt he's wearing actually has a logo on it for the Montreal Maroons, which was a hockey team that played in the NHL from between 1924 and 1938. It checks out. Then special glasses with protective side shields were available in the 1940s. The style of eyewear was not popular, but they were definitely around. And finally, Kodak did make small portable cameras that were available in 1941. Everything this guy is wearing in the photograph fits with the times. Perhaps what makes him really stand out is the fact that he's surrounded by older guys in suits and hats. Or maybe we're all wrong and he's a time-traveling tourist. The Dancing Plague of 1518 most people don't know about the Dancing Plague of 1518. This was a bizarre phenomenon that happened in the city of Strasbourg, which then would have been part of the Holy Roman Empire. According to History.com, residents of this town were struck by an abrupt and uncontrollable urge to dance. It was complete hysteria. It all began when a woman stepped into the street and began to twist, twirl, and shake completely silently. She supposedly kept dancing for a full week, and before long, at least three dozen other residents joined in her dancing. By the month of August, the dancing epidemic had at least 400 victims. Local physicians at the time blamed the dancing outbreak on hot blood and suggested that people were trying to dance the fever away. While this may seem fun, it definitely was not for the people who suffered from it. Some died from strokes, some died from heart attacks, and some simply dropped from exhaustion and died. The dancing went on until September when the dancers were forced up the side of a mountain to a special shrine where they could pray for absolution. So what actually happened? Well, according to historian John Waller, it was likely a mixture of belief and fear. The people back then did believe that curses were real and they were constantly afraid of disease and famine. It could have been a stress-induced hysteria that caused so many people to dance to their death. Or it could be something even stranger and more unexplainable than that. The WOW Signal 
The WOW signal is the strangest thing that ever came to us from outer space. It appeared on August 15, 1977 and was picked up by the Big Ear Telescope at The Ohio State University. The signal lasted for a full 72 seconds and was more complex and more intense than any other signal that has ever been picked up by the satellite from space. Another interesting thing about the signal is that it was a narrow bandwidth signal, more similar to something created artificially. The signal was also at the exact same frequency as radio waves that are emitted by neutral hydrogen gas in space. The region that it came from was completely silent other than this signal. For many, this has been indisputable evidence of extraterrestrial life. It could have been a signal sent from a UFO, picked up by us, but we are too stupid currently to decipher what it meant. All efforts to figure out the signal have failed, and since 1977, the signal has not repeated. Some have said that the signal was simply made by a passing comet, but others say that's nonsense. I'll let you be the judge. The Anjikuni Disappearance One of the strangest phenomena is mass disappearances. This is when a town, a whole ship, or an entire household goes missing all at once with no evidence of what happened to the people. One of the most blatant instances of mass disappearances in history happened in November of 1930 in a small Canadian village. The village had been occupied by the Inuit people and it was located on the shores of Lake Anjikuni. What had once been an industrial village became a ghost town overnight. The town was discovered first by a Canadian fur trader named Joe who was seeking shelter from the cold and accidentally stumbled upon the village. He had been there before and knew that a lot of people lived there. However, in 1930 when he returned there, not a single soul was left in the village. What makes the story even stranger is that there were pots of stew still steaming, huts full of clothing and food, and still not a single human soul. Even more mysterious was the fact that there were no footprints in the snow and no sled dogs. Joe eventually made his way to the nearest telegraph office where he sent a message to the Canadian Mounted Police for help. The police searched the village and what they found is simply terrifying. At the village burial ground, all the graves had been unearthed and were empty. It was as if all the dead people clawed their way out of the graves and then walked away. And to make things even more mysterious, the Mounties apparently saw pulsing blue lights above the village that then faded into the darkness of the horizon. In total, 2,000 Inuit people went missing without a trace and were never found again. Japanese Midget Sub Remnants of World War II can be found all over the planet, but not only on the shores of Europe and in the secret nuclear bunkers of the Midwest. Evidence of wartime can even be found in secluded islands all across the ocean between Japan and the United States. Specifically, we're looking at a midget submarine rusting away on the small island of Attu, west from Alaska. Back in the 1940s, the Japanese took control of this tiny island and built a midget submarine base on it. The United States eventually invaded the island and sabotaged the Japanese equipment, but they did not get rid of their garbage. The bulk of the base has either been removed or completely overgrown, but there is one relic left. The last true remnant of the Japanese presence is a submarine rusted and grown over by nature. In another few years, it will probably be completely under the grass. It is in a pretty remote part of the world, so you're unlikely to ever stumble upon it by accident, but it's still cool to know that these pieces of history are still left scattered across the globe. Plus, Mother Nature doesn't seem to have a problem swallowing them into the ground. GM EV1 Abandoned and neglected in an Atlanta parking garage is one of the rarest cars in the world. It's the GM EV1, and it might not be much to look at right off the bat, but believe me when I say this car is rare. According to The Drive, this was the first realistic electric car crafted by a modern automaker. It was also destroyed because of corporate greed almost 20 years ago now. This is because the EV1 worked so well that some people were afraid it would damage gasoline profits. At least that's the theory. Even today, the EV1 is the most advanced electric car the company has ever designed and produced. Despite this, the EV1 was declared a failed experiment and most of them were destroyed by General Motors. However, it's been estimated that roughly 20 of them managed to escape and one of them has been abandoned for an undetermined amount of time in this random parking lot in Atlanta. It was first reported of in 2019, so it's difficult to say if it's still sitting in the same place. Also, nobody really knows who put it there or why. It's a total mystery. DeLorean DMC-12 
Not every DeLorean DMC-12 can travel to the future, not every DeLorean is taken care of either. Recent photographs have surfaced of this incredibly unique and unmistakably historical car found abandoned in a dark and creepy part of a North Carolina forest. As reported by Auto Evolution, the car was found by a couple of guys after they heard of rumors of it rusting away somewhere near Sacramento. And lo and behold, in the forest they found the car. It's a huge shame, as this is one of the rarest and most unique automobiles in the world. The DeLorean probably has more niche fans than almost any other vehicle out there. Obviously, it became famous after being used to travel to the future in the Back to the Future movie trilogy. But what a lot of people don't know is that the DeLorean is a real car. It came equipped with a 2.8 liter V6 engine, it could kick out 150 horsepower, and it came either with a 5-speed manual or a 3-speed automatic transmission. As for the abandoned vehicle sitting in the middle of the forest, nobody knows how it got there or from which timeline it came, but it's safe to say that it will not be going anywhere again soon. If you could have any car in the world, what would you get? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already for more videos like these. Concord of the Sea a lot of people don't realize that hovercrafts have actually been in service for quite some time. Specifically, there are two famous hovercrafts that were used during the 1970s as a sophisticated way to get between Britain and France. This is one of the most traveled channels in the entire world, with people going back and forth between Great Britain and mainland Europe every single day. And while hovercrafts are pretty cool, they became completely obsolete after the channel tunnel was completed between the two pieces of land connecting France to England via a passage under the water. In 2000, the Princess Anne and Princess Margaret hovercraft were decommissioned and left abandoned. This once glorious and prestigious way to cross the channel became nothing but a memory. Now it looks like the crafts will end up being destroyed. In a recent report from the Daily Mail, they tell of how the abandoned hovercrafts are being handed over to the government in exchange for the owner not having to pay rent for all the years they sat abandoned. After these hovercrafts are lost, it's doubtful any new ones will be made. VVA-14 Experimental Amphibious Aircraft the Bartini Beria VVA-14 was a vertical takeoff amphibious aircraft from the Soviets. It's one of the most unique vehicles on the planet, to the point that it barely makes sense. The craft was developed in the 1970s and given the ability to fly at high speeds for long distances while also being able to take off from the water. It could also fly directly above the sea surface by using an advanced aerodynamic technique. However, after the original engineer died in 1974, the Soviets didn't really care about this weird vehicle anymore. It didn't serve much of a purpose, it was absolutely enormous, and there were more advanced things on the rise. So the project was scrapped and the VVA-14 was left abandoned. Thankfully, somebody had enough brains to tow the thing to the Russian Federation Central Air Force Museum in 1987 where it was rescued and put on display as the only remaining version of this vehicle. Abandoned Space Shuttle a photographer in Russia stumbled upon one of the most unique abandoned vehicles ever. It wasn't even really a vehicle. It was a wooden spaceship sitting seemingly in the middle of nowhere. Apparently, the wooden model is an exact 1 to 3 scale replica that was used to test the aerodynamics of the larger spacecrafts in a wind tunnel machine. It's actually sitting abandoned in an old section of an airfield, which itself has also been abandoned. The wooden space shuttle is in pretty rough shape, but it's fascinating since it's the only one of its kind. The man who photographed the shuttle thinks it was based on the VKK Space Orbiter platform, which was originally created to beat the USA to a reusable space vehicle in the 1980s. It's likely the only piece of the program left, an old wooden replica rotting away in the middle of nowhere. Mallows Bay 30 miles from Washington, D.C. is Mallows Bay, home to a massive maritime burial ground with some of the most peculiar abandoned vehicles ever. This place is home to over 100 wooden steamships from World War I that were cast off as being obsolete and left to slowly decay. It's arguably one of the most amazing scrapyards ever. It's also home to bald eagles, beavers, and river otters. It's a fascinating place that began roughly 100 years ago in 1917 as a place to abandon ships that were no longer useful. Now it's filled with a massive ghost fleet of half-finished vessels and forgotten crafts. Up until 1931, many of the vehicles had been scrapped properly. Not because of money issues, the scrapping stopped and everything has just been left as is. Now, it's basically just a big garbage heap that's popularly visited by people in kayaks taking photos of the decrepit vessels. If you want to see some of the most unique boats in the world, or at least what is left of them, you have to take a trip to Malos Bay. Russian Fighter Jet 
Here is one of the most unique fighter jets in the world. The TU Interceptor planes are rare enough as it is, but this particular training model only had about 10 produced in the 1970s. An aviation photographer found the only surviving one of its kind. It was located at a repair plant in rural Russia, and it appears to have been abandoned for quite a long time. This aircraft was used to train Soviet interceptor pilots, and what makes it so unique is that the instructor pilot's cockpit is located at the top of the airplane. This is much different from the normal TU interceptors that were heavily used after the 70s. The TU interceptors were long-range bomber planes capable of carrying nuclear weapons. Because of its unique appearance, many pilots have referred to this plane as a Pelican plane. Apparently, locals had tried to set this abandoned fighter jet up as a monument in their city square but couldn't get it through the front gates, which is why it's covered in a bunch of scratches. It has a broken wing too, and it's probably not going to be moved again until it's been consumed by weeds. As for the local town square, the villagers managed to get a similar Su-15 fighter jet through the gates, and that became their monument. The Mars Rover Opportunity the saddest abandoned vehicle on our list, and definitely the most expensive and unique, is not even located on Earth. In 2019, NASA had no choice but to abandon the Mars rover Opportunity and declared it officially deceased. The Mars rover Opportunity was a six-wheeled vehicle that had been running around Mars for many years before it lost power in a dust storm and basically died. According to an associate administrator for NASA's Science Mission Directorate, the Opportunity had completed its mission and would no longer be used. In other words, NASA had to abandon their rover. This is a huge shame considering the robot functioned on the Red Planet for over 14 years. Although, that is a pretty magnificent achievement considering the original mission was only supposed to last for 90 days. The rover managed to go 25 miles and send back to Earth thousands of pictures that have shaped the way we view our neighbor planet. As things look now, the rover will be abandoned in the dust until it completely decays, maybe in a thousand years. The Hunley Submarine the Hunley submarine was the world's first successful combat submarine. It set out on February 17, 1864 with a singular mission in mind. This ancient submarine belonged to the Confederate Army, and it was manned by eight soldiers. It also carried a bomb. The submarine slipped into the waters off the coast of Charleston, and the crew of eight hand-cranked the sub through the water for about 20 miles up the coast until they found the Union blockader USS Housatonic. The submarine then surfaced, fired off its torpedo, and blew apart the hull of the Housatonic in just a matter of seconds. Unfortunately, minutes later, the Hunley submarine sank with the entire crew still inside. It then sat at the bottom of the ocean abandoned and forgotten until excavations in 2000 brought the submarine back from the dead over 150 years later. This is arguably the most unique submarine ever rescued from its abandonment at the bottom of the ocean. There are definitely more impressive submarines that have been saved or abandoned over the years, but the world's first successful combat submarine manned by the evil Confederate Army is a historical treasure regardless what you think about the Civil War. Something that's really interesting about this story is that nobody had known why the ship sank after it successfully blew the other ship out of the water. It was not until the submarine was excavated and studied that we learned what happened. According to a United States Navy biomedical engineer from Duke University's Pratt School of Engineering, it's likely that the blast from the submarine's own torpedo sent a shockwave through its iron hull that killed all eight men inside instantly, causing the submarine to sink shortly after. The submarine is now sitting at the Hunley Lab in a specialized water tank in North Charleston. Which abandoned vehicle is your favorite? From strange new family planning techniques to evidence that could bring us closer to cloning woolly mammoths, here are eight unsettling discoveries that might change history. Three Parent Babies A controversial procedure that allows mothers with DNA-based genetic diseases to replace their faulty mitochondria with healthy mitochondria from a donor sounds like something out of a science fiction movie. These diseases can affect different parts of the body, but are only passed down through the mother to their children. For women who have these types of diseases and want to safeguard their future children, this replacement therapy allows for that, but it does not come without controversy. Some of these mitochondrial deficiencies, including blindness, diabetes, and hearing loss, are terrifying to parents 
parents who don't want their children to acquire disease later in life. But the replacement therapy, which takes damaged mitochondria from one patient and replaces it with the healthy mitochondria from another, has only been performed once in a human. The technique has some ethical concerns, with some worrying that the sensitive technique on early cells could disrupt others and cause further defects down the line. But for those who are worried about giving birth to children with defects, the controversial procedure is a risk they are willing to take, even if it is illegal in some places. In 2016, a child was born to a mother with a fatal disorder that affects her nervous system. Worried that their child would develop the disease, the couple underwent a procedure in which the mother's egg and a donor's egg were both fertilized by the father's sperm. Then, before the fertilized egg started dividing, both of the nuclei were removed and the nucleus from the donor's fertilized egg was discarded and replaced by the one from the mother's fertilized egg. This in theory resulted in a three-parent child, but the couple had to travel to Mexico to have the procedure done. While some believe it helps to save lives, others think it is more controversial and even goes against some religious beliefs. Either way, this treatment and similar ones to obtain the same result remain a cause for debate in the medical community, with some arguing it saves more lives lives than those it puts at risk. What do you think of this treatment? Is it ethical? Would you do it if you knew you had a genetic illness that might be passed down to your child? Let me know what you think in the comments below. Afterwards, be sure to subscribe if you haven't already to keep up with the latest videos. Mammoth Island in Siberia Thousands of years after the woolly mammoth vanished from mainland Alaska, a small number still live on an island in the Bering Sea, and all it took was one scientist's discovery in an underground cave to prove it. After descending into the underground cavern, scientist Matt Wooler uncovered an interesting link to the past. There on an island to remove a core sample from a crater lake, Wooler found a tooth from a mammoth among the bones of other mammoths, caribou, polar bears, and arctic foxes. Radiocarbon dating showed the mammoth died 6,500 years ago. After finding dust and pollen in the original core sample, the scientists hoped to find evidence of mammoths as well as info on how they died and when they might have happened. Pollen grains and fungus that lived on dung dropped by mammoths helped them to pinpoint when the creatures were alive. Located on the island of St. Paul, the core sample showed off 10,000 years of the island's history. It was once a part of the Bering Land Bridge, which once extended into the Arctic Ocean and allowed animals and ancient peoples to cross from the mainland. Although the last of the woolly mammoths died some 4,000 years ago, they once thrived in the northern hemisphere in areas from Spain to Alaska. As the earth began to warm, they lost their habitat, so finding the remains on St. Paul Island is an important link to the past and a striking reminder of how our current species could also be at risk as the globe continues to grow warmer every year. Another discovery of dwarf mammoths on Siberia's Wrangell Island shows that environment were not the only threats to the survival of this ancient species. As sea levels rose, the mammoths became trapped on the island. Because they were so isolated, inbreeding amongst those that remained ended up having stark consequences to the species. Genetic mutations such as developmental defects and low sperm count meant the mammoths were not very healthy, which could have been a contributing factor to their extinction. With a population that was too small and a lack in genetic diversity, these ancient mammoths eventually died out some 3,700 years ago. Canadian Viking Settlement in 1960, the first Viking settlement in North America was discovered by a Norwegian explorer on Canada's east coast. In 2016, a second similar settlement was spotted using satellite data. A far cry from the original discovery found by surveying unusual grass mounds in Newfoundland, the second settlement is about 375 miles 600 kilometers south of the original one. Known as Point Rosé, the site was shown to have high levels of iron, as well as turf walls, ash residue, roasted ore, and a fire-cracked boulder. A space archaeologist named Sarah Parsak detected the buried structures and excavated the turf walls and ironwork fireplace of the site's previous inhabitants. Using remote sensing tools to comb the area for buried objects, the group found 28 pounds 12 kilograms of slag used to roast iron ore, a key component in the nails used to build those great Viking ships. If more evidence can be uncovered, it would be the second settlement in the Canadian province. Lonceau Meadows is where Norse sailors first settled in the continent, building simple homes and huts 500 years before Christopher Columbus. Cold Spot in Space 
For many years, scientists have tried to explain the origin of a mysterious large cold region in the sky. The supervoid is known as a cold spot, the radiation left over from the birth of the universe. Scientists believe one possibility for the cold spot is that it was caused by a supervoid that light has traveled through, but it could also be a genuine cold reading from the early universe. Spanning more than a billion light years across, the cold spot was first observed in 2004 by NASA and later confirmed by the European Space Agency. Appearing in the southern celestial hemisphere, there are many theories surrounding the cold spot including contamination from the Milky Way or an unusual celestial object. But some conspiracy theorists even point to the possibility that the spot is evidence of a collision between our universe and a parallel universe. The galaxies found in the supervoid have a much lower density than they do in the rest of the universe. But could that really mean it is the doorway to a parallel universe? Visible on maps of what is known as the Cosmic Microwave Background, or CMB, these photos show what the universe looked like when it was 380,000 years old. To determine its origin, scientists take surveys of thousands of galaxies, spreading them out according to their wavelengths. This provides a pattern of lines emitted by different elements in the galaxy. So the further the galaxy is, the longer these wavelengths appear, showing exactly how far away these galaxies are. In studying these wavelengths, researchers could not explain why there was such a large void where the cold spot is located, and that is where the idea of clashing multiverses came from. More observations will be needed in order to understand the mysteries of the universe, and hopefully future observations using space-based telescopes can get a better idea what this enigma is. Sharks in a Volcano For those with a fear of what lurks beneath the surface of the ocean, a group of sharks found swimming at the bottom of a volcano might make you think twice about getting back into the water. In 2015, a group of scientists on a National Geographic expedition discovered the sharks inside one of the most active underwater volcanoes on Earth. Are you wondering how they were able to explore the volcano in the first place? The main peak, Kavachi, was not erupting during their visit, giving researchers the opportunity to drop instruments into the crater. That's how they spotted the hammerheads and silky sharks living inside. While the very hot, acidic water seems to be an inhospitable place, the sharks seem to thrive there. Humans cannot survive there, but after lowering their cameras, scientists spotted jellyfish, crabs, stingrays, and various sharks in the cave located in the Solomon Islands. Their discovery is one that shows that even in the deep sea, animals will find a way to adapt to their environments no matter how dangerous it may seem. The hot, acidic water made for cloudy observations and initially led scientists to wonder how any animals could survive there. But these sharks have proven that despite the inhospitable conditions, they have been able to adapt in the most unlikely of places. Cheruti Mastodon Site a surprising find at a site in California points to evidence that ancient humans could have been present some 100,000 years before previously thought. Found at the Cheruti Mastodon site near modern-day San Diego, the artifacts were discovered by a team including archaeologists from the Center for American Paleolithic Research and the San Diego Natural History Museum. 130,000 years ago, the climate was warm and wet and would have submerged any land connection between northern Asia and Alaska. Humans migrated to North America in small canoes or other vessels that would have allowed them to travel down the Pacific coast. Researchers believe that those who settled in Southern California could have been Neanderthals, Denisovans, and Homo erectus. But if the evidence were to point to Homo sapiens, it would be a startling discovery as there is no evidence true humans reached that part of the world that long ago. The remains found in the Southern California site, however, show them as tool users, although no fossils of the humans have been found to this date. Researchers believe they broke apart the bones of the huge mastodons to obtain the marrow inside. Scientists also believe they would have later turned the bone fragments into tools. Excavation at the site occurred in 1992 and 1993 after being exposed during a construction project. Backhoes and heavy construction equipment had to be brought in to move the mastodon bones, which led some to believe that the markings on the bones were in fact from the modern construction and not the ancient peoples who are hypothesized to have settled here. At the time, the ancient Southern California landscape also had many streams which could have caused the broken mastodon bones to clash against large stones, leaving marks on them. However, a sediment layer at the San Diego site had pieces of mastodon bones, some of which were broken apart spread among large bones. After using stones to break elephant bones on large rocks nearby, researchers found they had sustained similar damage as the ancient bones. Although more research will need to be done on the mastodon remains, the discovery is an exciting one with the potential to rewrite history. Toxic air killed the dinosaurs 
Everyone has heard about the asteroid that impacted Mexico effectively wiping out the dinosaurs, but could they have died from more natural causes? 66 million years ago, when an asteroid almost 9 miles 15 kilometers in diameter slammed into the Earth, it delivered a force equivalent to 10 billion atom bombs. But is it possible this event, known as the Cretaceous Paleogene Extinction Event, is not the only reason the dinosaurs went extinct? In the aftermath, global temperatures plummeted and soot and sulfur reduced the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth. But new research shows that temperatures rebounded after the event, and the release of sulfur when the asteroid slammed into sulfur-rich rocks triggered an onslaught of acid rain. Imagine all the oceans the remaining dinosaurs relied upon for water acidifying, and all the plants dissolving from intense acid rain. There would be no way the dinosaurs could have survived with no food or water. One piece of evidence of this theory is the fact that fern plants, which grow well in acidic soil, were the only ones to survive the impact and recolonized Earth the quickest after the event. Even though the effects of the asteroid's impact only took minutes to hours, it would take the Earth another 100,000 years to return to its previous state, allowing plants to once again grow and animals to thrive. Lost Civilization in Bosnia in the spring of 2016, an archaeologist discovered a strange stone sphere in the forests of Bosnia. But what exactly is the massive stone ball and how did it get there? After studying the phenomena for 15 years, Sam Osmanangic believes the stone ball was the largest found in Europe. At the time of its discovery, less than half of the ball had been uncovered, but it is estimated to be between 4 and 5 feet. Its distinct brown and red coloring point to it having a very high iron content, with preliminary weight calculations coming in at over 32 tons. Similar stones have previously been discovered in Costa Rica, but if the calculations of this one are to be believed, it would be twice as heavy as those. The fact that it was also probably made by hand would mean it is the largest man-made stone ball. This is a remarkable find, since it would have taken an advanced civilization from the distant past to have made such an object with their primitive tools they would have also needed to have advanced knowledge of geometrical shapes. Some experts still believe the sphere is a natural formation and not a man-made one, though pointing to a phenomena known as spheroidal weathering that results in concentric or spherical layers of highly decayed rock. Whether it is man-made or something out of nature, the find is a fascinating one, and it deserves further study to determine its origin. What did you think of these strange discoveries? Which did you think was the most fascinating? What else do you think lies out there that's waiting to upend our current worldview? Let me know your opinion in the comments below. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time.